Hey everyone, this lesson is on the antibiotic metronidazole. Metronidazole is also known as Flagyl. Flagyl is its trade name. And here is a image of metronidazole. It's a small molecule with a low molecular weight, and that will become important when we talk about its mechanism of action and distribution. Because it is a low molecular weight molecule, it has a rapid and effective absorption, and it can be absorbed equally well with oral and IV uh, administrations. And it penetrates all tissues well because of its small size. It can penetrate bone well and also penetrate in the blood into the brain through the blood-brain barrier. So what are some of the bacterial targets for metronidazole? The key targets for metronidazole are the obligate anaerobes. These include Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile is one of the biggest targets for metronidazole use. Other targets include Clostridium perfringens that is involved in gas gangrene. It's also involved in treating bacteroides infections. It can also have some activity against facultative anaerobes such as Helicobacter pylori and Gardnerella vaginalis. And some other targets for metronidazole include protozoa, which include Entamoeba histolytica, Giardia lamblia, and Trichomonas vaginalis. So these are important targets for metronidazole as well. And the key thing I want you to take from this slide is that metronidazole is not effective against aerobes. It's only used for anaerobes and some protozoa and particularly the obligate anaerobes. So again, the biggest target I want you to remember is Clostridium difficile for metronidazole, but it's also good for other obligate anaerobes and some protozoa. So the infections that metronidazole can be used to treat include anaerobic infections, pseudomembranous colitis, which is caused by Clostridium difficile, bacterial vaginitis, some STIs like trichomoniasis, so which is due to the uh, protozoa trichomonas vaginalis, and also intra-abdominal abscesses, but a big one is brain abscesses because of its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. So metronidazole is good for Clostridium difficile, it's good for some STIs, and it's also good for abscesses. So how does metronidazole work? What is its mechanism of action? Metronidazole is a bactericidal antibiotic. It is bactericidal through its ability to damage microbial DNA and its ability to inhibit nucleic acid synthesis. And it does these things through its ability to induce the formation of reactive oxygen species, or ROS. So when metronidazole comes into contact with a bacteria, it can easily diffuse through the bacterial cell membrane due to its small size. And it can actually diffuse into both aerobes and anaerobes, but it only has effects on uh, killing anaerobes. So in an anaerobic bacteria, they use the pyruvate ferredoxin oxidoreductase system to basically process pyruvate into ATP. So what happens is ferredoxin can become reduced through this reaction, but when metronidazole is around, metronidazole, through its nitro group here, can actually take a few of these electrons. So it becomes an electron sink. So the nitro group on metronidazole is an electron sink. It takes electrons from ferredoxin essentially oxidizing ferredoxin, to become itself a nitro radical anion. This nitro radical anion can then become a reactive oxygen species, which can then lead to DNA damage and fragmentation, destroying the anaerobe. So this is essentially a simplified mechanism of action of metronidazole, and this is how it occurs. Again, through its nitro group, on the metronidazole, acting as an electron sink, it picks up electrons from ferredoxin, becoming an anion, leading to reactive oxygen species production and DNA damage and eventual cell death. So what are some of the adverse reactions of metronidazole use? 
Some of the big ones are gastrointestinal side effects. These include nausea, vomiting, anorexia, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and constipation. And taking a PO, a patient may complain of a metallic taste, so it's an um, unpleasant metallic taste. Some of the other adverse reactions include nervous system uh, side effects, which include seizures, dizziness, peripheral neuropathy, vertigo, ataxia, and confusion. There are some allergic reactions, including urticaria and rash can occur with its use. There are genitourinary effects, including a transient, deep, red-brown color urine. So this is this is just a temporary thing, and it doesn't really have a disconcerting or a, a particular um, irritating effect. And the big one that I want you to take from this slide is ethanol consumption. If you take metronidazole or you prescribe it to your patient, make sure that they don't consume ethanol when using metronidazole. That's the big one. When someone takes metronidazole and consumes ethanol, they can have a disulfiram-like reaction. This means that they can have symptoms of flushing, tachycardia, palpitations, and severe nausea and vomiting. So again, when a patient's taking night metronidazole, make sure that they don't drink alcohol with metronidazole. That was a quick lesson on metronidazole. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Also, please check out my other antibiotic lessons in my infectious disease playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.